computer. Ooh. All right, guys. Larry, I'm going to give you the five count. All right. Five, four, <clears throat> three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning to, uh, I'm sorry, February 20th, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. The devil has gotten me. I've somehow hung out with a bunch of atheists. Help me. <laughs> help me, Jesus. Help me. I think he, they've, he's got all of us, really. And our guests today are um, George Brown, the two and a half from Brooklyn. Hello. Uh, originally from Brooklyn. Yeah. Hello. Uh, In the Bible have, Belt right now. That's right. And uh, we have two new guests with us today. We have Joe Sky. Hello, Joe. Howdy. And uh, you're from Texas. Is that right? You Currently. Cool. And Slew, welcome to the show. Where are you all from? Right. I'm from Ohio, um, close okay. to West Virginia, so right around okay. that area. Real good. Uh, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faith, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in town, well, you're just not. In Knoxville, here in the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand atheists, and we'll tell you more about that group after the mid-show break. Wombat, where are we going today? We're going to be talking Talk about, is church just adult daycare, which I'm really happy to jump into, but we have so many more exciting things to jump into. We have Well, uh, it, it, it can't be an entertainment because that would fall under adult entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it'd That's be not right. It'd be taxed. Let's not jump the topic, oh. though. We have, <laughs> we have two great new uh, callers. Uh, Joe has actually been on the show previously, but slew brand new. Can you guys see me? My phone is overheating. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, you, <laughs> no, your you video can't. dropped. Oh, no. But well, hey, hopefully it'll come back. My, we can my hear you. I mean, we can this hear is you. radio. We can hear you. So <laughs> we we're going to do a quick introduction on Slew. Slew, would you mind telling us about everything about you in the next 30 seconds? Go. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was a Christian for most of my life. I grew up in a Baptist uh, church, an independent Baptist church. Mm -hmm. um, I'd come out of that in my 20s or so. I'm 33 now, and I've, uh, I've got a podcast called The Skeptical Satanist. Ooh. I'm an atheist and a Satanist and humanist and depends on what, what questions being asked, I guess, on what uh -huh. label I want to put on that. Well put, well put, mm -hmm. well put. Cause everything can mean so many different things. Right. right. Like, but unfortunately there is a, a good textbook definition for each of those terms, humanism, atheism, and Satanism. What do you think is the one people get the most confused? Do you feel like there's more baggage on Satanism or atheism or. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> I, I think there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of baggage on Satanism itself, and there's a lot of there's a lot of well, I mean, atheists have been being called Satanists for how long by Christians anyway? So it's you know that's that kind of already ties into that. <laughs> yeah. Um, skepticism has its own bag of of issues, I think sometimes. But okay, yeah. okay. You I have know, a quick question for you though. Yeah, go for it. Before yeah. you go on, um, you're a Satanist. Do you actually yes. believe that Satan is real? No, I don't. Okay. That's, that's the thing that most people come to me with. You guys worship Satan. No. Uh, even the saint. No, it's, no. it's symbolism of rebellion against authority. Mm -hmm. um, it's so, a loyal other. Right. Yeah. If anything, it's, I'm using your same book. So if you hate what I'm doing, imagine where I got this from, right? Like, exactly. I didn't just come up with this yeah. on my own. Like, I'm using your <laughs> book to do that. Yeah. It's just like, so give me as many rights as you do, since you have them ingrained in institutions, you can be a Christian. Let me have the exact same access because we're using the same book. So like, no, I don't like that. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. like, you want to, you want to have, you want to have your church thing in, in public schools and stuff. Then Satanists get to have their thing there too. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So help me out. Freedom from all religions or for all freedom, religions. Yeah. You know, the weirdest thing is though, Christians really love that crucifix. And you would think if there was anything that a Satanist would like be the first icon to pick to be like down with Jesus. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm saying this in the most blunt way possible. Wouldn't it have been this crucifix? It's just so bizarre that Christians took that. And it's like, if Jesus ever came back, it'd be like, you know, he doesn't like those things, right? 
Like this is just very, very bizarre. The last thing you'd want to see is crucifixes everywhere. The last thing I want to see. Yeah. That's a terrible impression of Jesus, but there you go. Uh -huh. Luke, what do you do now? What's tell me about this podcast that you got going on? Um, I've got the skeptical Satanist podcast. I've just started back up with it. I'm trying to get more Satanists on. I've had quite a few atheists and, and people on. Um, I had Aaron Ferguson on that uh, told his story about being in the children of God cult. I like to go through um, different backgrounds of atheism and Satanism and um, kind of touch on news and um, things going on in, um, in today's uh, society and everything in the U.S. And so. Were you raised religiously and then transitioned out of that religion? In, yeah. Um, Satanism? Yeah, who yeah, was a Baptist like yep. me? Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was an independent Baptist um, my whole life, and um, I had I transitioned out of that. It was in a it was a, a very racist, homophobic setting, and everything, and very uh, just yeah, hate driven. I I see it as. Um, so I'd kind of transitioned out of that and towards humanism and things. I started listening. First podcast I listened to was Dr. Daryl Ray's Secular Sexuality. Mm. which opened my mind to a lot of things at that time and um, started kind of getting me to question things even more when it came along the lines of uh, the religion I was raised in. Well, shoot. We're glad to have you on this side, if anything. The way how I look at it is you were an atheist when you were born. You didn't believe in God when you were born. And then you were indoctrinated into baptism, right? Right. And it's been a lifelong struggle to get back out of it, you know, and, and yeah. return to the light if you want to call it that but. i i never expected to be back in a religion again like <laughs> after leaving you know but it was just one of those things that already lined up with humanism like right. all of the tenets are just humanist and, tenets and mm -hmm. it does it puts the finger on the problem it's not religion that's the problem it's this gnostic theism that's the issue when you claim to know something that can't that is both immaterial and both designed not to be known but, but yet you claim confidence that you have it you end up with all these extra methodologies of knowing things that are not sustainable, that aren't reliable, and can lead to consequences when you interact with other people. It's a significant issue. But before we get too much into that, Sky, your hair is looking so great. I love it. I'm going to put oh. you, I'm going to ask you to unmute my friend and, and join this conversation whenever you can. There you go. How are you, man? I'm good. Tell me your life Hurry. story in 30 seconds. Go. Okay. <laughs> I was raised a secular humanist by my grandparents. I never even looked at a Bible until I was, I'd say, about 20. Wow. wow. Um, I actually became quite interested from a, a scholarly standpoint. I became interested in the Bible and early Christianity. So I took it up as a study. I've been studying it for over 30 years now. Uh, I blog about Christianity, the early church, origins of Christianity, and topics of interest to atheists like mythicism, uh, laws affecting atheists. Uh, I've written about cancel culture. This uh, was last year, so I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of all over the map, but I I try to keep it atheist oriented. Nice. I was thinking, is it better, Larry, I'm asking you this question, is it better in your opinion to, to never have been exposed to the ideas of God and then call yourself an atheist or maybe to go through the struggles of being forced into a well, you know, back out? What do you I think? I think the ultimate goal is not to believe in anything supernatural, mm. but um, I think that you're much more uh, able to counter the arguments of the religious people if you have came come from that background mm -hmm. uh, look at matt Dillaconte in uh, in austin texas at the atheist experience uh he was studying christianity uh, quite a bit and very hard for a long time to be able to become a preacher mm -hmm. uh but before he ever got to be preacher a preacher uh his studies led him to see that uh god wasn't real but he still has that background that he can then draw on to counter the arguments of apologists uh, however, if you've never been through religion, you don't have to do the struggle. Yeah, you, you save know, yourself and, a lot and, of time too. Right? And, and carry the pain and, and uh, guilt. Uh, that Resentment? 
and resentment that a religion has foisted upon you all those years. Yeah. George, what do you think? I saw you raising your hand. What do you think? You've had a yeah. organic atheist upbringing yourself. Organic Jewish atheist upbringing. <laughs> 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 so, um, you know, uh, uh, I have to really extend my um, sympathy and admiration for you guys who had to throw off your indoctrination. It must, must have been an absolute hell of a task to do that. And um, I, I didn't have to do it. See, um, my parents were dragging me off to um, he, humanist lectures at the age of four, when, of course, I couldn't understand a word of it and was very bored in the pews of the Brooklyn Society for Ethical Culture. And the one thing I want to, the irony of ethical culture is that I believe that it was founded by uh, secular Jews around the, the uh, a little before the turn of the 20th century in New York City. And um, for whatever reason, they chartered themselves as a religion in New York State. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. and I, th I think the reason for that was to simply try to get some legal equal footing right. with, you know, with the theology people. So it has, it has remained, um, you know, a, a, a charted religion, which to me is, is utterly strange, but I, I still understand it. And so the, the main ethical culture society is headquartered in Manhattan. And there have been branches in different cities around the U.S. from time to time. I don't know what the status is now. Larry, I, I see the floor to you. Well, I was just going to say that the Rationalists of East Tennessee has, uh, started in Oak Ridge over 20 years ago, and they started as a religious organization to be able to get in, to have the, quote, word or classification of religion open the same doors for them as oh, it did all the I churches. Didn't know that. So they, yeah. R.E.T. in Tennessee. R.E.T. is a religious is a organization. Religious organi mm -hmm. I had no idea. Yeah. Well, and I'm, a, I'm an ordained minister under that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was and, uh, beginning to say, because I share George's sympathies, I, I do feel bad for the ones who had to be indoctrinated when they're young, especially when they had no idea of anything else. And I was one of those people. And the way I think about it is I saw my religion as a bottle, but I didn't realize it was a bottle of poison. Because it was never something I ever had to open. It was just something that I felt privileged to have compared to other people who didn't have that bottle. And it wasn't until I opened up the bottle and understood, oh my gosh, look at what's in it, that I became an atheist. It wasn't until I was told what morality was in an academic setting, in a college class, and then went back to my Bible to look for better examples and couldn't find any, that I realized this is an immoral book oh my gosh, I've been having these poison bottles in my pocket for like the last eight years or so. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Hey, George, I see you raising your hand. What's up? Yeah, Tyrone, I just wanted to ask you, what, what version of poison were you drinking all those years? Now, that's a great question. That's a great question because we were military, so we moved around a lot. So I have been to epistemological churches, Pentecostal, Baptist, Methodist, Lutherans. Every single time we moved to a new city, we would join up with a different church. I've seen wow. black churches, white churches, Mexican churches. I've seen Korean Jesuses on crosses. I've seen black Jesuses on crosses, like wow. on mantles and frames. I've seen it all, but it never hit in my head what was going on with the dissonance of all these different narratives and the culture that I was geolocationally positioned at, that everyone made religion flavored to them. And so it was sort of like I was dealing with, I don't know, I'm going to make a weird abstract concept here, but there used to be a food called cornuts. And cornets come in so many different flavors. Some are super gross, some are super awesome. So if someone asks if you like cornets, you could say yes, but you mean like, which one? Ranch? Because nobody likes ranch. I like ranch. It's like, <laughs> we're not talking about the same thing then. We're not talking about the same thing. Mm -hmm. But that's what religion was. It was just basically different flavors that were so drastic, despite the fact that they all had the same name and they all had the same label. They were very, very different things. And you could just fall into the circle that you like. So yeah, um, I am not happy that I wasted a lot of time there but I do feel like those experiences have made me a better atheist in terms of rejecting bad argumentation mm -hmm. and logic. And I feel like I'm more secure in my position right now as a non-believer than I would have been otherwise, because I could have easily been tempted into another religion by now, another cult by now, if I didn't have that reasoning. Slu, do you feel, am I, is that something that you feel the same? 
Yeah, I I mean, I kind of do. I hate the idea of it being a silver lining. Like, I hate that that terminology, you know what I mean? Of that, oh, well, it's just, you know, you got to look at that as a silver lining. If No, I could have come across those things in other ways, like other than having to be indoctrinated into that. Right. Um, so I do, I agree to, to a degree. I do, I understand that I've, um, I, I've done a lot more questioning, I think, being in that position being indoctrinated for so long than if i weren't um if, if for me it was the the rejection of faith of it not being a, a logical epistemological tool to be using That's throughout right. my life and that was where things really started to my deconstruction started was was around that mm, i agree faith really really terrible i consider them the same thing as eyebrows you know like even if i have it even if defined in a way where I do have it, I don't value it as a decision-making process. It's just a thing that I have, but I'd rather have better tools to come to conclusions. Sky, I'm going to ask you a, a similar question. The idea that uh, you were not indoctrinated into a religion, that you've discovered all these tenets about atheism, essentially, or reasonable thinking all on your own. Do you ever feel like maybe you're missing a little bit of empathy for people who are in a religious situation? because you've never gone through that experience yourself? I have gone through it with friends. I have gone through with friends leaving the faith and the struggles that they've had, losing family, losing friends, feeling alienated, feeling confused. So, and I'm a pretty empathetic person. Uh, I, I can relate, I can find things in my own life that were similar, that had, I had similar experiences. Like when I came out as gay, I lost a good part of my family. Sure. So, you know, that's comparing apples and oranges, but what I'm saying is that, you know, because I too have felt alienated and confused and lost family and lost friends that it's a similar experience. Mm. And I, I think that, I think that I kind of dodged a bullet by not being indoctrinated. Yeah. More like a cannonball, especially in America, right? Yeah. You, you matrixed underneath that and just like, oh, wow, I have so much more free time now. George, what's up? Well, uh, Sky just triggered a, a thought. <laughs> in my mind yes he said dodged a bullet yes i i share that i i feel that too mm -hmm. uh, and I, i've dodged a bullet and i've also been confused because these people know th things that i don't know i don't mean in terms of facts but in terms of indoctrination so um i'm an outcast I'm an outcast because I'm an atheist. I'm an outcast because I'm Jewish to begin with, and not, but I'm not. See, I'm outcast from that community because <laughs> I, I, I didn't have that religion. So I'm an outcast and I'm an outcast. <laughs> <laughs> and I have other reasons why I'm an outcast. So I'm, I'm very, very much an outcast. And I feel comfortable when I'm around outcasts and I'm not, a, I'm not comfortable when I'm around conformists. I, I love the idea that there are other, because we live in a society that's so ingrained in tribalism to an extent, it's very easy to empathize with someone who is struggling to get out of religion or not being accepted in a particular social group because we can find areas in our own selves where we have similar experiences. And it only highlights in my head more the us versus them mentality that I get from like Christianity, where it's, it's the Hebrews who are the chosen people or it's the Palestinians who aren't or it's the Samaritans who are the bad guys, except for that one good example, or it's the people who aren't Christians, the people who don't go to the third street Baptist church, because we go to the fifth street Baptist church. You, it's the, it's, they can find any reason, the Republicans, Democrats, or the religious basis behind it, that, that really spoils me. And for a religion that positions itself as loving and open, it is just nothing but division and, and derision for our fellow man. And I, I, I just really hate that. Larry, do you feel like I'm on the right page, or do you actually see similar lines being drawn in the sand by religion all the time? Um, could you rephrase that question? Do uh, you think that there is a divisionist agenda in the Bible? <clears throat> Let's throw that out at you. Well, yeah, it's, it's us versus them. I mean, uh, you know, 
in the Bible, it was the Israelites against the world, basically. Uh, and <clears throat> excuse me, uh, look at the Amalites. Uh, uh, there was a guy who uh, wrote a, a bunch of uh, stories about from the Bible, um, and he turned them in an audio book. And he and one of the points he made was, if you lived in in the eastern mediterranean area at the time of the uh, the israelites were moving around and doing their thing he says the last thing you want is a israelite village moving in next door because what they do is they raid and they they fight and they they claim slaves and it was like having the hell's angels move in next door is what, what it is and you know it's it's us versus them uh, it's, it's, that's what religions do it's not it, just of course the israelites it's all religions in my head not to pile on but it goes all the way to the new testament jesus was not about combining everybody and loving everybody he said specifically i'm here to make sons argue with dads i'm here to be a sword to divide families like i'm not right. here to be peaceful mm -hmm. and loving we're right. here to cause chaos and you've right. done it congratulations right. so he i says, think he goes, yeah. You cannot be my disciple unless you hate your mother and your father and your sister and your brother and yeah, yourself. Yeah. And have you ever tried to stuff a camel through an eye of a needle? It's like oh. what comes out mm. the other end is not a camel. I guarantee you it's pretty, pretty gross. <laughs> sausage. <laughs> <laughs> camel it's camel sausage. <laughs> it's camel sausage. Slew, um, have you found any, now that you're back in religion, do you find any like value in being in a religious setting again? Has that been helpful for you? And what do you think are those positive points? Um, the most, the most positive thing I get to see is that, uh, uh, I guess the sense of community and everything with, um, other Satanists, other atheists and everything. Um, the, the tenets, uh, they're, I, I think they're great the way that they're written and everything. It's, it's just something that, um lines up well with my day-to-day -day life anyways so not bad not bad not bad now here's the weird thing i'm going to ask this weird question as a satanist when you hang out with other satanists can you do that tax free or is there a standard in texas where it's not recognized and you can't do it in that regard i don't know about texas um i'm not i'm not from there but uh Oh, I'm sorry, I, Ohio, Ohio. My bad. I believe we do have tax-free status, yes, nice. because they are they are recognized as an official religion. So, yeah. Interesting. So interesting. Okay. Okay. Go for it, George. What is a Satanist? Do we have a definition? Well, we've had Satanists on the show multiple times, but sure, Slu, do you want to go through it one more time? Um, like I said, it's, it's more or less, it's, uh, the symbolism of Satan that's being used. It's not an actual, we aren't worshiping Satan or anything of that nature. Um, we're using Satan as a symbol of, um, of rebellion against an, an unjust God or authority for that matter. Right. So I also find like, if you were not to know who the good guy or the bad guy was in the Bible, right. And you only had Satan and God, like one character kills all of humanity and demands to be worshipped in the very first chapter. That's yeah, that's, exactly. that's like chapter one. And the other he's, guy's like, go for it. Go sorry. For it he's, he's holding people under duress. You love me or I get to throw you into a burning pit. How much, <laughs> like how loving is that? Or like like it warps too. it warps the idea of love to begin with. It, it manipulates people's understanding of that term. Go for it, Sky. What's up? I think if the person offering you salvation is also threatening you with torture, mm. if you don't agree to salvation on their terms, what you have is not a savior, you have a terrorist. Right, right. And, you know, almost in every example, and this is the weirdest thing, because like, obviously, I'm not a proponent of the Bible in any regard. But if you look at every action that Satan does in the book, it's sort of like, yeah, if you're hungry, you can eat that fruit. But let me tell you something, you have no idea of knowing what's right or wrong, but it's gonna, this is gonna screw you up. So I might as well just tell it to you anyway, because you're not responsible for your actions. But yeah, eat well, if you need to eat, right? The, also, I think the worst part is it's the fruit of knowledge, right? Yeah, you're not going to know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <you're gonna laughs> <eat it> anyway. <laughs> and it's like in hand, you could reach for it. If, I mean, come on, come on. What's going on here? And then the other thing weird is there was a part, there's a chapter in the New Testament where Jesus is being tempted by Satan. He's like up on a mountain. And Satan's like, listen, if you want to, uh, if you worship me, I'll blah, 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 blah. And Jesus is like, I will not worship you. And the devil's like, okay, cool. 
I respect your choice. See you later. I'm not going to punish you for it. I'm just going to go on my own way. And Jesus is just left there on that mountain feeling all righteous. And in my head, I'm like, God doesn't even give you that deal. God will say, if you don't worship me, I will punish you for the rest of your life. Jesus, the devil is like, I respect consent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. Larry, you got final words before we go out to a break? Um, no, I, I think I pretty much said what I wanted to say. Sure, uh, but sure. we can go for the break and, and sure. build out the Sure. Is, is church adult daycare? And then we'll run into it. As opposed to adult uh, entertainment. Interesting. Um, <laughs> Uh, this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. Okay. Four, three, two. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm Doubter Five. Now let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 20th year, and we have over a thousand members now. And we have weekly in-person meetings in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables, usually the loudest and happiest group. We also have Tuesday evening Zoom Ask meetings. Uh, if you'd like to join us, email us at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or letschatse at gmail.com. You can find ASK on Facebook, meetup.com, or at knoxvilleatheist.org. Or you can just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one. Start one. Start one. That's right. Uh, Wombat, where do you want to pick up? Hey, so we have uh, a nice intro on Slu and Sky who joined us this morning. Thank you guys so much for hopping in. Today we're going to be talking about is church essentially just daycare for adults? And the reason why I was thinking about that is I remember daycare growing up. I had a lot of babysitters growing up, but I also went to a lot of daycare centers. It was great. There were my friends who were all there. There were story time. You got juice at the end. And I'm like, wait a second. This sounds familiar. Because mm -hmm. when you're in church, mm -hmm. I'm there with all my colleagues. It's some guys telling me some stories. Maybe I like them. Maybe I don't. Maybe I'm falling asleep. But it's okay. There's nap time too in daycare. And, you know, once a month or something like that, you get a little juice and crackers. And you're like, oh, this is fantastic. I love it. And when you're a kid, you don't pay for daycare. When you're an adult, you don't technically pay for church. They try to get you to. But maybe it's only a dollar a week at worst. What do you guys think? Um, Slu, I'm going to throw this out at you first. Daycare for adults. Is that what church is? I mean, I'd say that there's definitely enough people taking nap time in those places from what I've seen. So, yeah. And, and the little juice and crackers, you know, that's, <laughs> that's nice. Um, yeah. I mean, aside from that, I, daycares at least pay taxes and yeah, mm. churches aren't doing so much of that. So um, if that's what they want to do, I mean, I'd... I'd I'd be welcome to them paying taxes because there are way too many that don't, that are making the mega churches and stuff, especially that are making so much money. They are making so much money. I wish we mm -hmm. could see those books. Unfortunately, they don't want to share it to us, but Hey, what is it? What are you going to do? Larry, what do you think of the idea that uh, church is just daycare for adults? Well, if it were only that, mm. it would be a lot better from my, my view. Uh, they tend to just pass on all these supernatural uh, views in, in addition to just taking care of the adults during that time. And that sets um, society back. Uh, there's a lot of things that are wrong with religion. And uh, we've had whole shows about that. If anybody would like to look at the individual things that, that go on with in a society that a religion controls, go to digitalfreethought.com and look for my article um what's so wrong with religion anyway but that's that's it for me they don't stop at daycare they don't stop at just taking your time they they uh brainwash you basically they tell you how to vote they do you know yeah oh and a lot of things second class uh citizenship for women um they diss science uh, yeah. they give you wrong answers to uh things that uh exist in the world and why 
uh, morality is is based on obedience instead of uh, good uh, good practices. Uh, it's just one thing after another. It it fosters anti intellectualism. It fosters yes. in a weird way inside small towns this tribalistic community where you could have two streets or that have the same church just with different street numbers on them. That ha- that is a thing here in this in the town that I'm in. And it's the most bizarre thing. It's like, why is there a church here and a church here? Like, can't I, they just agree? What's up, Slew? I came from a small town that yeah. was like maybe 2,000 people at most. And there were eight churches in that town, two Church of Christ on the same, on Main Street. As north, a north, uh, north Main Church of Christ and a south. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, there is a lot of that. And they aren't that different from Each any of the other the religions other. around either. Yeah. So. Each pointing to the other saying they're wrong and going to hell. Exactly. Yeah. It's sort of like when a Burger King opens up. No, no, this is this is the better example. I've gone to places in one of my hometowns because I haven't many, but there's a subway and then right across the street is another subway. And you're like, what in the world is going on? Do they want the up traffic and the down traffic? This is a this is a two lane street. What is going on? At least they sell the same sandwiches. <laughs> With churches like that, you may get a completely different flavor from just across the road. Uh, George, what's up? I'm puzzled about the subways as well. Uh, <laughs> driving across the United States, it, it, I, it dawned on me that Subway is the most ubiquitous restaurant in the mm. country. Mm. And why? I don't get it. Mm. I don't know. Is but, it like well, is it like know, the churches? I no, mean, I'm going to throw this out at you too because I feel like while Subway is ubiquitous, I would almost argue that there's more churches than there are Subways because oh, you don't have to right. sell a product. For well, sure, you're giving away false hope. That's the easiest thing to commoditize, right? In a sense, or they're selling a product that doesn't exist. I mean, Larry- Subway is at least named after something that gets you somewhere. <laughs> oh, 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 very good. We're glad we have you on the show. And feed you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Larry, I do think you have a great point though, because it is fiction in the sense when you are being told a story in daycare, you're not under the impression that there is a real lady named Rapunzel. Um, unless it's a religious right? daycare. I've been to several of those when I was a kid. You know, Sunday school being an example of that. Mm. But there are also religious daycares that have, you know, the Ten Commandments on the wall and then the the ark and all the little animals and just you know they they also will give you the same uh supernatural stories as churches will right but it's all part and parcel uh of part and parcel of religious teachings if only there was an agreement that what they were saying was fiction then i'd be like oh well maybe this isn't so bad because this is just a fun time hang out with your friends drink juice or even that it could be stories. true it's all good. they they don't even mention that there's possibility that it's wrong right you know they demand that you believe it right right yeah. right that plus 10 percent. like well, look at uh what was it robert's church uh, institution at university you when you sign on to the university you have to sign a belief um, I don't know what they call it. It's not a waiver, but it's a statement saying you believe and subscribe to these particular beliefs or you do not get into our university. You won't get into our universe? Yeah, university. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I just, think you it's never know. You never know. You have to ask these Liberty questions. University, I think, is one of them. George, I got a weird question for you. Did you ever have daycare growing up? And what do you think of the idea as churches as adults for, or daycare for adults? Well, boy, uh, yes, daycare growing up, Hmm. kind of. um, I went to a preschool for a short time. It was in a mansion in Brooklyn, and um, it was a lot of fun. There was a a little tiny bowling alley in the basement. That's almost all I remember. And rabbits. We had rabbits when we had naps. Um, You had rabbits? Yeah, there were there were pet bunnies, bunny rabbits. Okay. Real ones. Okay. They went around. They left little presents on your cot, you know, and um, a little round brown ones. Yeah, little round brown ones. Yes, yes. And, and now daycare for adults. That's so confusing to me because I I I can almost relate to it. It's a social club, really, hmm. uh, on Sunday that I see. It's a very powerful social club because you're, you're in it or you're out. Right. And, and when you go on Sunday, 
it is a community that welcomes you. You're, you're, you're part of it if you right. subscribe to the tenets of the thing, which you usually do, I think. Right. And, and so you are welcome here. You are part of us. This is, again, the us versus them that you were talking about. You know, very, very powerful. You're part of the in-group. Well, they, he's talking about the community and everything. The other thing is they refer to you as family. It's mm -hmm. very cult-like, the whole religion to begin with, that they are kind of giving you this thing of, um, I don't know if it would be an appeal to authority, if it would be more of a, a sense of, um, of just special pleading for these people, right. that you don't treat them the same way as others or anything. And that's your family. That's your family, you know? So... <laughs> It's very manipulative in that sense for those things. Sure. Larry. Well, yeah, I was just going to say that the Catholic Church uh, takes it to a whole lot higher level. Uh, the preachers, the priests that you're supposed to listen to and obey are, are your fathers, literally called the fathers. Right. Uh, the the authority figure in the uh, nunnery, as it was, is mother, your mother superior. And then the sisters, the nuns are all sisters. Uh, it's, it's a very cult-like, you know, leave your family behind and come and join our family. You know, it, it, they don't care if they divide your family in, in two or three pieces, as long as they get their uh, followers. That's, that's the main point. George. Yeah, I, Larry, I, I think that what you've raised is very powerful, very significant, because um, I, I'm a little confused about the female side of this but in the male side i think this is this practice is actually emasculating of the father in a real family oh, because it, right. it is proposing an, an alternative father which is the priest right and and there's an alternative father of course which is god mm. and and so this this is a very subtle way of robbing power away mm. from the the man um you know the the, the husband and wife duo well, especially i'm Go sorry, ahead, sorry. i was just gonna say especially when the church comes down on you and say that the hierarchy is jesus the father the mother the children mm -hmm. in other words everybody looks up to the father for leadership but the father is supposed to look for jesus now mm -hmm. jesus doesn't really show up and give him any direction so who does it, the preacher, it does if you the, take the right drugs. It does. Yeah, the right drugs. but the preacher. So all of this is very handy for the preacher and the religious organization. Right. So you know, religion as an institution does not generate a product. Doesn't generate power. Like from time immemorial, religion gets things by robbing them from other institutions. Power, ideas, culture, music, everything. Right. People, money. It get. Mm -hmm. It takes. And then assumes it's, that it already had the authority to do so. It's parasitic. It's very parasitic. It doesn't exist without a working climate or a working economy mm -hmm. surrounding it. Right. And so when George mentions robbing power, that is wholly the game plan of religion. I am here to take power from families because when you stop listening to your family, listen to me, I as religion win at the end of the day. And it's a really unfortunate circumstance. It also puts, Larry, as you were saying, fathers, brothers. I remember when I was in a Baptist church and I called everyone brother Teresa or brother, brother Mary, or, uh, but these are weird combinations of words and names, but who, maybe not 2022, uh -huh. who cares? But I'm saying like, uh, you earn authority or you are told to be uh, a position of authority for somebody and churches never give you the opportunity to even learn who are the people that you are referring to by these names. They're essentially people who talk to you, but you never get as much opportunity to talk to them or understand where they're coming from or how they behave or what kind of culture they maintain. You're just my first week in every church. I'm being hugged left and right by people. I don't know who any of these people are. There's like a fake, almost saccharine level of sincerity mm -hmm. around me. And I'm told that's father blank. That's pastor. This, this is the guy who's like, I don't care who any of these people are. I just want to hear, you know, what you guys believe and how you came to those conclusions. You don't really get that opportunity to, and it's just so it's a weird thing. It's a lot like a cult. Speaking of cults, Lou, you're a Satanist. 
Does anyone ever called you a cult before? And how would you even define a cult? I would like to know this. I, <laughs> I, I haven't. Um, I, I would say it probably fits under that category. It depends on your definition of cult and all of that. But What's your um, definition? I mean, I had somebody on my show, like I said, that was in the Children of God cult for mm. most of his life. So to him, I, I, which I would go with his definition of it. He says that there isn't any difference between a religion and a cult. The only mm. real difference is numbers. Right. So you've got a smaller number of people in this this religion. There, it's it makes it a cult. Right. That's about the only thing. It's marketing, baby. That's it at yeah. the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. All right. What's up, George? Well, I think that uh, it's it's different than that in my mind. Uh, in my mind, the definition of cult is what the other guys believe. <laughs> and I mean, because we have we have a huge cult in this country right now. Almost half of the voters in this country are in a cult, <laughs> and I'm going to stop here. I, you know, I, I'm not going to get any more political on this. A, a religion is what you see in the mirror. A cult is what you see with your eyes, like in a sense, like everything else is a cult. But what you see when in your own home, when you're looking at your own face, is a religion, and, and that's such an unfortunate. Because if you go through the definitions of cult, there's actually a government issued document that is a concern report for, it was released in the 60s. So it's still up to date, even though when you look at it, it's like, what is a cult? There's typically a guy in charge. They try to change your name or terminology. They ask for money at the end of the day. They congregate at least once a week. They try to instill family values in place of your own. I'm like, aren't we reading religions? Like, this is religion. This is religion. What are we it's, talking about? Slew. It's funny that that definition came up in the 60s, right? What was going yeah. on then? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Though... So it is, it's a bizarre concept though we talked about a churches being daycares for adults we don't like how churches operate how would we change it what would a, what would a daycare for adults look like in the most ideal sense the secular version i'll throw this out to slew first your guest of honor oh george we'll go to you right next slew what would you want to see in an adult daycare an adult daycare. Well, yeah, I'm not sure daycare. that I want to see an adult daycare. <laughs> like, really? I would I, love it. Are you kidding? No, 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 no. To, no. to me, that's entertainment of of these, you know, children or whatever, just to keep them busy while their their moms or dads are out doing, you know, whatever. So it's like, to me, that doesn't seem that doesn't seem like something I really want for adults. I want um, <laughs> more more questioning, more more something so togetherness a anything. parlor room with a bunch of tables and well, obfuscation I've, of cigar smoke and people I just think, discussing philosophy like that could be a thing that could be i think everybody's there. different i uh, with those things though like i i enjoy the the satanist community and the things that they do with um with well with the places around us they're they're doing great things for um women's rights and and um the schools and trying to get equal um standing for religion and stuff so that it isn't just christians taking over these public schools and things right. and mm. shut, forcing their views on them <clears throat> um and i'd i've went to something called a sunday assembly yes before uh -huh. that has a structure a structure similar to church but they kind of implement things that are not they're all secular things and they'll have people on that are um that are they'll have guests there that will speak on topics one i went to was on like rovers and stuff like mars rovers and everything Ooh, it was really cool terrible. yeah um so i like that i i like those things the structure itself kind of triggers me just for the mm. fact of the it being so similar even wow. though they aren't you know anything to do with one another really in I, that sense i totally get it i totally get it so i've i've done talks at a, a secular or a sunday school assembly the the weird thing is how oddly church like everything actually is right down to the band and but it's not but you're like i get the flavor but it doesn't have to be in this box right like i almost enjoy oh. not this form factor but i i get it universalist <laughs> unitarian universes same vibe you get a lot of science talks but also all the religions have a chance to talk and it's that's also weird too what's up george sorry well, as an organic atheist, my 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 version of this would be just uh, uh, jungle gyms and swings and you know a little merry-go-round type type thing, very large ones, and we need very thick rubber mats all around, you know, and maybe a medic more fun. and an ambulance. I don't want to pick. 
I don't want to pick already, but George has a pretty <laughs> fun one that I'd like to go to right now. Laser tags. Come on. Unlimited arcade <laughs> coins. Let's go. That'd be awesome. Larry, what's your adult daycare look like? Um, <clears throat> uh, what do you call it? Retirement home. <laughs> <laughs> With VR headsets, though, right? <laughs> That's right. There it would have, have to have virtual reality for it to be able to keep me in there. Slew, I think um, you win points by the community outreach. Like, there's no reason why you can't incorporate that into a daycare. It doesn't just have to be for you. You can do it for your community. And so, and and then George, too, you can have some fun in there. Throw some rubber balls in there. Have a ball pit. And then Larry. Well, I have a lot of, I'd have a lot of animals, too. You know, <laughs> A lot of rabbits leaving behind, treats behind. <laughs> Guys. Can Let's get into some listener feedback. We did have some commenters on last week's episode. I hadn't pulled it up just yet. So how about this? Um, while I pull up the comments <laughs> for a video ad, Slu, thank you for coming by. Is there anything we should check out? Anything you'd like to plug while I put these comments? Um, my podcast is on YouTube. I got the skeptical Satanist up there. Um, I would recommend, well, with what we're talking about and everything, the God virus is a great book by, um, Dr. Dale Ray that goes into a lot of the things we're speaking about as far as, um, religion and how it mutates and things throughout history and, and things of that nature. And he's got a couple projects that I I'd like to plug that were, that are good, um, as well, the Recovering from Religion Foundation, recoveringfromreligion.org, and uh, Secular Therapy Project, um, seculartherapyproject.org as well. So nice, nice, nice. Cool. Guys, here are our comments from last week's episode. Last week was, of course, Should You Become a Christian? Presented to us by our own George Brown, the second and a half. Uh, we had a comment from uh, Dada's Trading Room who said, If the God of Christianity were true, then we would all be Christian by default. So no one would ever need to convert anybody. And to that comment, I would say it would be pretty obvious which God was real. And if you, all it takes is to believe in that God is to be a Christian. Sure. But I also feel like there's a worship component too. And so like, I might believe that that God's real if it's evident, but if that God doesn't deserve my respect, I, and any God that asks for worship is probably below that limit i would never worship that so i may not even be a christian even if i knew that god was true larry do you feel the same way oh you're on mute my bud i just saw john richards pop in i thought we ought to turn it over to him uh, can hey, you john richards phrase a question for him it just he wasn't sure. here for the rest of the show because i made a mistake and didn't uh, the, the <laughs> so john <laughs> we just had a comment that was from last week's episode the comment was from goddess trading room he's saying basically if God was real. If the Christian God was real, everyone would be Christian by default. So you wouldn't need to waste time converting anybody. Do you think you'd be a Christian if you knew the Christian God was real and he made himself evident? Or would there be a, would there be an another step for like worshiping? It's a long question, but you know me, I love my long questions. What's up, John? Well, I, I can't see any way that the, the Christian God would be able to demonstrate himself to be evident granted yeah. that granted granted that that is almost impossible. okay okay would you be so, a christian then uh in that case you're you're saying i don't have a choice really i'm sort of born a christian oh i'm saying you ha now though that this god is real and exists similar to like how satan knows that god is real and exists but sa satan's not a christian right yeah. in the same way you have a choice of becoming a christian or not and i feel like just knowing that the God is real is not the same thing as becoming a, a, an ardent member of that person's religion or that being's religion. Well, I, I don't see the, the reason to have a religion in any case. I don't see the need for worshipping some, you know, even if it's a real mm. deity. I, I right. don't, why should we worship that thing? Exactly. It's like if Jupiter came down, it's like, okay, so you were real, but I'm not going to be a Jupiterite. <laughs> <laughs> George, what's up? George, what's up? Well, I was, I was going to ask you, John, I mean, you have an official religion in your country, mm. and we have people in my country who want to have an official religion, and they're hell-bound to make that happen. Yeah. And um, how do we deal with all this stuff? I mean... The big question. 
in, in in Great Britain, you you obviously don't all adhere to it, and yet it's set in stone somehow. So how do you deal with that? Well, we we sensibly changed the rules back in King Henry VIII's day, about 500 years ago, when he decided he wanted to be our local pope. Right. <laughs> yeah. yes. Tudor, Tudor dynasty hi uh -huh. highlight, yeah. Exactly, yep. yes, yes. And and you can go and see Runnymede, uh, for example, and, and uh, uh, the, the the palace of, um, I forget what it's called, but it's, it's all here to visit, and it's great fun going, going on those trips commercial for Britain. <laughs> but the, the point is that that was so long ago, mm. we've allowed the established church to wither away, mm. to age and become impotent, you know? It, it, and this has been an organic process for you, right? It, mm. it parallel, in my mind, this parallels what has happened in France, in Italy, and maybe even in Ireland, where the church, the church's dominance is just sort of withering away. Do you well, why see doesn't it? that happen in Iran or Iraq or or Pakistan? Like, what's the difference there, and what should be the thing or markers we look for where some churches are given time to age and others just become more and more and more strict? Fear. Like Poland. Mm. Fear. They in in Muslim countries they they rule by fear. So. That's that's very good for keeping people engaged and concentrating on well, how they should behave. Very good. But in, in what about Poland? Let's say Poland, where where it's becoming more entrenched. I, I feel. Is it? I don't know much about Poland, but the situation in Ireland, for example, it's very recent the decline of Catholicism in Ireland, mm. and and it's come about because of modern technology, which has enabled the, the pedophilia, the priests that have been covered up to suddenly become well known. You know, that was right up until recently, that was, that was not popular knowledge, not common knowledge, I should say. I love it. John, you got to join the show earlier. We love talking to you. You're a bastion of not only knowledge, but that delicious, delicious, weird, I, European accent thing. You add so much culture to the show. I got to be honest with you. He's British. British. We had one more. <laughs> it's like he's British. It's like, yep. Uh, we had one more comment from Boffle Guy. He said, if there was a powerful being that already showed themselves to humans in the past, there's no reason not to show up again. You might as well be saying, or Christians might as well be saying, you have a girlfriend, but she lives on Jupiter. Hey, we had two calls outs for Jupiters on the same show. Thank you guys so much for the comments. I wish we can go had time to go through them all, but feel free to leave them in the comments uh, on my YouTube page if you're here or on Larry's if he's also posted it. Uh, we are near the ending of the show. Slew, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for the plugs. We really appreciate having you on. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Uh, John Richards, you had an amazing fundraiser yesterday. I'm not even sure if it's still ongoing right now as we speak, but would you no, want to no, that as well? It's finished, but it was fun. I really enjoyed doing it, even though it kept me out up longer than my bedtime, well past my bedtime. <laughs> who's, the, who's the fundraiser for? That was for Recovering from Religion organization, fantastic organization. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you can still see it. It's now available as a podcast, and you can still donate. Just fantastic. go and click on the links. Fantastic. George, anything that you'd recommend we check out before next week? I have just glommed on to Vietnamese coffee. Ooh, very <laughs> cool. Sky, if you're still with us, feel free to take stuff. yourself off mute. He might still be, he might be still away with his dog. He's had some dog issues. Larry, yeah. how how you holding up? Oh, John, one more? Yeah. What's up? What I forgot to say, of course, is where to go to see the, the fundraiser. And it's a free thought productions. That's my YouTube channel. Very, very okay. cool. cool. Also, thank you for playing my music. That was so cool. It was really nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for letting me use it. Oh, anytime, anytime you want. It's on record now. You can use it anytime it's... you want. I can't take it to court. We, we like it's, to sue in it's... the U.S. I've just, I completely killed every case I could bring against you now. It's a wonderful gift. It's brain balm, I like to think, if you're music. <laughs> thank it's, you. It's feel good. Larry, what's up with you? And Anything you'd like to plug? Well, my content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button. 
Uh, we have our radio show archives there, Atheist Songs, many articles on the subject of atheism and religion. I do have a book out called Atheism, What's It All About? And it's available on uh, Amazon, or you can find my YouTube content on YouTube by searching for my name. If you have any questions for the show, send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or to letschatse at gmail.com, and we'll answer them on future shows. If you're having trouble leaving your religious beliefs behind, you can find help at uh, recoveringfromreligion.org. Great place, great resources, and good people. Thank you for joining us at the uh, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, you can find this show on Apple iTunes, Pocket Cast, Amazon, and podcasts everywhere. Just search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. Remember, everyone is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. <laughs> Until then, don't sweat it and enjoy your life. We'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. -bye. bye. Thank you so much, everybody. That was great. <laughs>